Before traveling to Korea, we didn't know much about Korean food, but since getting back from Korea, we've been obsessed with Korean food. And Korean dramas. We missed it so much that we found a Korean market near our house where we're headed to get some of our favorites. We're gonna reminisce on our favorite Korean foods and let you know where you should try them in Seoul. Whether you're in Seoul for a layover or you're in the country for a full week, you need to try these foods for yourself. In preparation for our trip, I did a lot of research on the food we should try and where to get them. Mm. And I researched by watching K-dramas, which is honestly a great approach because they are always eating in those shows. This is a small, I swear. And you always see them eating fried chicken and... Korean barbecue. Korean barbecue is a fun dining experience. It is social, entertaining, and will make your taste buds sing. Traditionally, pork is ordered as a lower cost option, but there are some great cuts of Korean steak available as well. We ate at two Korean barbecue restaurants in Seoul and both were delicious. The meat on its own is great, but one of the best parts of eating Korean barbecue is all the side dishes. So Banchan is the name for traditional Korean side dishes. The one you've probably heard of is kimchi, which is a fermented and vegetable, typically radish or cabbage. But there are also cucumber salads, bean sprouts, pickled onions, and many, many more. And you'll likely find these sides without even trying because they come with every meal. Sit down meals are great, but there's something about trying country street food that always gets us excited. One of the reasons we love to travel is to experience new food. And there is not a better place to try lots of new foods at once than a street market. We're headed to the Gwangjang Market to try some of Korea's best street food. This market is a great one-stop shop to try all of the classics. There are so many stalls to choose from. Our first stop was to get this bimbap bowl. A bimbap translates to mixed rice and that's essentially what it is. Rice is mixed with a lot of marinated and fermented vegetables. You can also add meat like bulgogi. Everything is tossed together with a sweet and spicy sauce and it usually is served with a fried egg on top. It's like chicken. <laughs> Delicious. Next up is tukbuki, which is as delicious as it's fun to say. Tukbuki is made with these chewy rice cakes in a very spicy sauce. And be warned, it can be pretty messy if your chopstick skills are subpar. It's slippery. It's really slippery. Maybe just focus on eating the tukbuki. Alright. Once you finish the tukbuki, you will likely have some extra sauce, and the best thing to do with that is dip the next food in the leftovers. Tukbuki and gimbap, name a better duo? I'll wait. Gimbap is cooked rice, veggies, and sometimes a protein rolled in sheets of dried seaweed. It's a great light snack served in bite-sized pizzas. Delicious. If you happen to pick this up from a convenience store, go ahead and try the famous banana milk while you're there as well. Before we get off street food, we gotta talk about mung bean pancakes. These are all over the Gwangjang market and will probably be the first thing that catches your eye when you walk in. And it's got that like crunchy outer hash brown. Pretty good. This place is very busy. Let's leave the bustle of the market behind for now and move on to number seven on the list. Next up, everybody loves some needs. Kalguksu is chewy knife cut wheat noodles served in a big old bowl of broth with some light toppings like green onions or mushrooms. This dish is simple, but it is an art that has been perfected. Do not skip this one. Mandu are jumbo dumplings. These dumplings are huge. They are typically served steamed and opposed to those baby dumplings you get in other parts of Asia. These are super filling. There is a Michelin guided spot right near the Gongbokong Palace. Gongbokong? Gongbokong. That's probably not how you pronounce it, that's where we are this morning. Which has some incredible kalguksu and manu dumplings. You should definitely check this place out while you're in Seoul. Make sure to arrive early because a queue will build fast. Got bingsu from Seoul Bing in Korea. It's basically a dessert restaurant, but this is the King Mango Ice. Milk shaved ice with a whole bunch of toppings. This thing is like the size of my head. It's huge, but it looks so delicious and I cannot wait to dive in. We were leaving the station and the smell of these like literally just drew me in. They look delicious. We got it in assorted mix. I think they're like pancake or waffle batter filled with like 
red bean, peanut, cheese. These are honestly surprisingly good. I kind of thought they'd be like Subway food and I'd be like, meh. But that one had like red bean and walnut in it. Every single one of these that we've been into so far has been absolutely delicious. We got this treat on our way to the Hongdae Street, which is known for its shopping, cafes, and coffee shops. If you find yourself in this area looking for a coffee to pair with this snack, we recommend... Those are the top 10 foods we recommend you try when you're in South Korea. If you try them while you're there or at even at a local restaurant, let us know what you think. All right, we're gonna head home and make some bibimbap. If we missed your favorite Korean food, let us know what it is down in the comments to help out a fellow traveler. We had a great time exploring Seoul. If you wanna see a first timers travel guide to a weekend in Seoul, we will leave a link to our other video here. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Annyeong! Look at this. Lauren, did you really watch all of these? <laughs>